Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'll be repotting my American Elm here in the bonsai zone. I was worried that I wasn't going to get all my trees repotted that I wanted to this spring, but the weather's turned cold now. We actually got some snow on the ground this morning. So this cool weather might buy me a little more time to finish my repotting. So today I'm starting with my American Elms. I have three of them that just grew in the front garden. And I'm going to take you back and show you the history of these Elms. They were collected four years ago from the front garden and they just grew there all by themselves. I didn't plant the seeds or anything. They just fell to the ground and these trees grew. So I'll take you back in time now and we'll have a look at the history of the American Elms. Ugh. Okay, here we go. Wow, the ground's really hard down here. Okay, so I'm getting close to getting the first elm out. We'll get our loppers in there and cut that fairly large root down here at the back, like so. That one's out of the ground. There. And it's out. So there's those big roots I cut off. Not a bad root system, it's fairly shallow. Gives us a lot to work with. There we go, if we can get this maple out around it here. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so two big roots. I'll just talk about root pruning a bit. Uh, when the tree's in the ground, it has a lot of vigor. It's had these big roots. All the energy now is in the tree and less in the roots at this time of year. So when you root prune, it's a good time to do it now because you can do some pretty severe root pruning and the tree lives. The energy's in the tree. The leaves come out, it puts energy back down into the roots, which grows your roots. So. We want to be fairly severe with the root pruning at first because once it's in a pot it has less vigor than in the ground. You don't have as much root mass to store energy. So you want to make your first initial root pruning a good one. There's no point you know letting roots grow up from the tips of these thick ones if they're way out here. You want to prune it back. You can see it'll fit in the pot okay but we want our root division to start fairly close to the trunk where we're dividing from one root into two roots, two into four, and so on. We don't want roots way out at the edges. Okay, so we're going to do some uh, fairly major lopping now. Okay, so I've got my saw and I'm just going to clean up these cuts too. There we go. So there's the root we're cut off. And there's our root base now. So here's the trees planted. And you'll notice I've got them buried fairly deeply. Uh, I'm not worried about showing surface roots or anything at this point in time. We want to keep the roots down low, keep them moist, keep it well watered. Hi there, Nigel Saunders here. Today we're looking at my American Elm bonsais. Uh, they were dug up from the garden this spring. They had very few roots and all three trees survived. So I've been letting them grow for the entire summer and they've been growing quite well. Yeah, I think that'll do. I think that's about all the pruning we can do on it today. Well, you can see if you ever started an elm forest, how intertwined the roots become in one year. <clears throat> there we go. Whew. There, three separate trees. Got some pockets of old soil in here we're combing out. All right, so now it's time to start working on the roots. There's one gone. Yeah, so our root plane will be somewhere down here. 
So here's another one that's too high, so we get rid of that. This is what you call a pom-pom root, where the root comes out, it's been cut, and then it branches off into one, two, three, four, five, and probably ten, ten different fine roots. So we want to select our best ones and get rid of some of the obvious ones we don't like. So that's kind of the root system we have at the moment for this year. I don't think we can do much more work on the roots. We're kind of uh, getting down to the basics. Before I fill the soil, you know, I'm going to fill it up to a higher level to ensure all the roots are in the soil nicely. But before I fill it in, I'll give you a rotation. This kind of gives you a preview. This would probably be the planting height if we weren't working on the roots still as much. So it kind of gives you an idea of what our root system's like at the moment. And back to somewhere about the front. Here's the largest of the three American elms. This was in the basement for the winter and then when the weather started warming up I brought it back outside and it's been sitting on the bench ever since. And the buds are swelling really nicely on it. Uh, you can see up top here. Yeah, they're, they're getting nice and fat. The, um, the tree has recovered. I, since the last repotting I put it in this pot and the leaves were very small for I think the first year after repotting. And then last year the leaves started to get quite a bit larger. So that means the root system is nicely established in the pot now and I can repot it again. I kept the other two American elms in the greenhouse. So let's go in and have a look at those. So there's one right here. Whoa. And you can see that the leaves are starting to come out on it now. You can see some green. So I would have liked to repot those a little earlier, but uh, you know, better late than never. My other one is over here behind the Douglas firs. And it's also in the same state. The leaves are just starting to come out. It's because of the cold spell we had last night, it dropped below freezing. I brought all the trees that I have recently repotted into the greenhouse here just to give them a little more protection. You can see the red maple over here. The leaves are just starting to come out on it. That's good. I've got my Austrian pine that I repotted recently in here. My cedar or my thuya. My ginkgo. Uh, my small leafed linden tree. Yeah, so just to give them a little more protection. I brought the Douglas fir forest in because we had really high winds last night and I didn't want them... I put these in this pot... Uh, when did I do that? Last... Last... Uh, no, when was that? It was Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving of last year. So they haven't really had time. They haven't had a growing season in this pot yet. So I've got all these large rocks placed on them to keep them anchored in the pot. And I didn't want them like in the high winds and blowing all about and kind of disturbing the roots too much. So I brought them in too, just to keep them safe and sound. My willow cuttings from that old tree in the park are doing well. They're coming out into leaf and they're also got all kinds of flowers on them. I don't know if you can see that in there. You can see the flowers, the cones on them. Yeah, so they'll, uh, I'm sure they'll root. I can see a few white roots starting in the, in the water down there. So that's good. My royal oaks here, I have only one, two, three. Three of them survived. That's not a royal oak, this one. That's something different. But yeah, you can see the pot here. All the squirrels dug up all the rest and took them away. They actually take the nut with the tree growing out of it and they take it away. So I do have three left. So I'm hoping to get to repot them this year, but if not, they're, they're fine in this pot. Um, I'll keep them in the greenhouse here so the squirrels don't get the, don't dig them up or something. Out of all those royal oaks I planted, I'm left with three of them now. 
And these are the weaker ones. They were planted indoors. So they, uh, I planted them in fall and they grew indoors all winter and grew really nicely. And then I brought them out in summer and they just sort of sulked and they grew really weakly. There's a couple of them here that actually died. But three of them, you know, they grew weakly all that summer. And then I brought them into the basement to overwinter them and they've survived. So I've got, you know, there's buds coming out on this one, buds coming out on this one and buds coming out on this one also. So yeah, so I've got three and I think now that they're on their natural cycle of sp summer and winter, I think they'll grow quite large and healthy. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how they do this summer. My linden tree here, it actually flowered for the first time last year and you can see right over here is the two little seed pods. There's a little wing here that's like a, a helicopter so they break off the tree and they spiral down to the ground and it plants the little seed pods. So that's kind of exciting. It was quite exciting to see it all in flower last year. I mean, the flowers aren't really showy, but they smell really nice. And uh, yeah, it's something to look forward to on this tree is getting those spring flowers every year. The candles on the Austrian pine are elongating quite a bit. You can see them here. And over on this branch, you can see the candles. They're all starting to elongate up top here also so that's good i'm hoping you know once those new needles come out that all that energy will go back and grow a really good strong root system again to recover from its repotting because it's so cold outside i'm going to do the american elm repotting here in the greenhouse where it's a little warmer i'll go outside now and get the first american elm for repotting Here it is. The pot that the elm is in now is starting to get brittle and it's cracking away at the edges here. So I need to find a new pot, a tougher pot to put the tree in. I'm going to use the same black feed pan that I used on my maple tree from Hydro 2OR. It's a really good, tough quality plastic. I think this will last for many, many, many years. So. I'll have to drill some drainage holes in the bottom. The Miller Falls drill came through again. I got my five drainage holes drilled in the bottom. I've cut a drainage screen to fit in the bottom of the pot. So now I can put a layer of soil in there and it'll be ready for the tree. This is going to take a lot of soil. And I think I'll have to mix up some more. I've got a new tub of soil mixed up so the repotting can proceed. This will be quite exciting. I'm going to remove the tree from the pot and I'll be able to see what the roots look like two years after the last repotting. So here I go. I'm going to lift the tree out carefully. Oh, it's really heavy. Oh, there we go. Oh, I think I put rocks in the bottom. Wow, that's really full of roots too. Amazing. I, I think I put a layer of rocks in the bottom. That's why it's so heavy. I'll remove the moss from the top of the surface. There is a few little cedar seedlings in here that I'll try and save also. I'll try and remove these little Thuya seedlings here. I think I'll do the raking of the roots outside. That way I won't make a huge mess in the greenhouse here. The flare at the base of this tree is getting quite nice. It's getting wider each year. So continued root work will help improve that in future. So I'll just slowly and carefully comb out the old soil. Again, starting from the middle of the tree and raking outwards. So far, I'm finding a nice density of roots 
in the soil here. So I think it was a good time to repot. Everything's going well with the combing. The roots look good and healthy. There's lots of new fine roots everywhere. I'm going to flip the tree over now and start working on the bottom. And I see a lot of roots that have wrapped around the bottom here. And there's that layer of rocks I had in there. I'm gonna try using my larger three-prong root rake. I think it'll make it a little easier combing. I'm going to start pruning off some of these extra long roots just to make the root combing a little easier. I'm getting to the point where I can run the root rake through almost all the sections of roots. So I'm still, you know, working on untangling them, but it's getting a lot better. All those matted sections are coming out and all those tangled crossing roots are getting sorted out. All those rocks are off the bottom now. So I think I'm getting close to being able to wash the roots. And try and get you know more of the soil away and see what we have. So I'll take it over to the washing station now. Alright, in it goes. Wash my hands too. Yeah, that's getting pretty good. Look at that. You can see the bottom of the tree now. <clears throat> it's time now for the detailed prune, so I'll comb them all out again. There's still a little bit of soil in there, but not too much. Get all these roots untangled. I'm quite happy with the root system on this tree. You know, going from a collected tree to a nice radial root system in four years. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the progress. I'm going to start by pruning the roots on the bottom. There's a lot of roots that are sticking straight down, preventing me from sitting the tree nice and flat. So I'll remove those first. There's one right here. There's another one right in here. There we go. I could probably comb that out even a little more now. Get rid of some of that old soil. Just a little bit of rotting at the base of the tree there, but not much. I did have to make quite a big saw cut at the bottom of the tree to remove a giant root. So I'll come in with the smaller pruners now. All these roots pointing straight down can be removed. That's a lot better underneath now. I'll flip the tree over and we'll start on the top. This tree is a good example of some of the unbalanced vigor in the root base. It always had this really large root on this side. So I've got to take some vigor out of this root and you know encourage these smaller roots to grow to kind of equalize the roots, the size of the roots more. I don't want them as large as this one. This is sort of I guess you'd call it a major defect in the root system. Um, a solution could be to split that root in two and try and wedge it apart and someday it might heal over and look better, but I don't think it's too bad. It flows nicely into the soil and you know as this tree grows these finer roots out here will become surface roots and this will become more part of the trunk. So. I don't think it'll be a problem in future having that great big root to the side here. The important part will be to, you know, keep working on the root system to balance the vigor. 
I'll do some more profile pruning just to take off some of these long roots and you know just trim it to a circular shape or an oval shape the edges of the root system you can see some of these have curled around the pot and need to be shortened right back to here it doesn't look like this one root has survived here it doesn't look very healthy and there's no live roots coming off of it yeah it's just dead see I just broke it off so now I've got to come in and start pruning roots for direction pruning away the roots I don't like keeping the ones I do like there's a nice root kind of growing here I'll keep let me just prune the end of that one off so it blends in a bit better there's one sticking up here I don't want like that um, so this big thick root um, I want to reduce it it comes down one root and I kind of want it dividing into two or maybe three um, and nothing else coming off of it and that'll reduce the vigor of it so I've got to pick you know some good roots here with nice flow lines um, just trying to sort out what's going on here there's, there's a root crossing going into the root ball here that's what's happening there that's better so um, coming off of here this one's a little crooked and it's growing quite deeply down in the soil but it's not a bad location but I think it would be better without it so I'm going to remove that one I just have to get in here a little deeper like that there we go so I have that one kind of big root system coming off to this side and then I kind of want to separate it so it divides from the one into the two and this one's coming kind of coming straight out which I, I don't really like either I'd rather develop these ones over on this side so I'm also going to remove this one like that so now I want my root will divide here and it you know it still flows nice and that'll take a little vigor out of that big thick root too so that kind of maybe solves a lot of problems for that root I come around I've got this one root that kind of just sticks up there that doesn't look very good does it however I don't know how much of it's dead I'm going to prune it back like that and if it's dead nothing will happen it'll just rot away if it's alive it'll maybe callus over and grow some more roots from down below here just trying to see what's going on here yeah I don't think it's alive I, I think I could safely prune it away there seems to be yeah it's just sticking up it's dead so I'm going to prune it away making it nice and flush here if I can that's not bad can't be too fussy there Yeah, so lots of roots in that area. Now, remember this one? I said it was, it looked like it was dead, but it does have live roots off of it. And it's kind of sticking up in the air. I, I don't, it doesn't follow that rule of flowing down from the trunk, tapering into the soil. So I've got to remove that one also. 
like that. And now it tapers down nicely into the soil. I'll just comb that section out. There's a root here that kind of doesn't come in a nice radial pattern. Um, it's not the worst root in the world, uh, but it isn't a really good one. I'm just, I'm just going to shorten it to here, like that. And then maybe some more roots will develop off of that. That'll flow a little nicer with that root system coming off of here. Uh, again, this one doesn't flow really nicely, but I don't have a lot of other roots in that area. I've got some lower down a possibility of getting rid of that one. Um, I don't know. Like I said, they're not they're not the worst in the world. And there's not much else in this area, so I think I, I will leave them for now. And we'll see how everything develops in the future. And we're coming around to this, another thick root here that does sort of divide into two here, which is good. Everything looks pretty good on that root. I've got a root off to the side here that doesn't flow very nicely. I'll get rid of that. Another one here. Oops. Cut that a little better, like that. Reduce this one a bit. It's a little thick. Maybe this one on the bottom here too. Just cut a few of these long ones off here. Like that. Another long one there. Um, this root here. I'll just take this one off. I'll shorten it to there. There's some coming off the side of this thick one. Um, this one actually flows pretty good, but there's one down lower that doesn't, so I'll remove that one. I think I'll have to use the bigger pruners for that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that one flows quite nicely. The other one didn't. Okay. So that brings us back around to the really thick root. That's pretty well all the root pruning I can do for today. Oh, it's making progress. Okay, I think it's time to plant the tree. I brought the pot outside. I'm just gonna test fit the tree. Oh, that looks good. I, I uh, there's just a few roots I missed down here. The root mass fits in the pot really nicely. I don't need to do any additional trimming, but I do need to put more soil on the bottom of the pot. I'll build up a mound in the center of the pot. And then I can place the tree on top and adjust it to the right height, getting all these roots in a nice radial pattern. So I'm checking the height of the tree in the pot. Um, it actually looks pretty good there. You can see a lot of the surface roots just sticking above the lip of the pot nicely. Um, I gotta make sure the tree is nice and straight in the pot. I don't want it leaning or anything. There's one long root here I'm gonna prune back. Just a little fine one. Just checking it from all angles, making sure I'm happy with it. I think I need it tilting back a little more here, like that.
Okay, that's looking pretty good. So next I'll comb out the roots. This is a final comb out before I add the soil. So just to make sure they're all arranged the best they can. This soil is nice and dry, so it's flowing in around the roots really nicely. I'm going to do a final check of the height of the tree in the pot. I think it could be raised just a little bit. The roots are almost at the right level with the soil where it is, so I need to bring it up, you know, maybe another maybe this far. So I'll do that just by lifting the tree and working the soil in as I go and it'll just raise the tree up. I think this is a much better pot than the last one it was in. I think those roots are going to grow really well in this soil and this pot. It's got good drainage holes in the bottom. The last pot I think the drainage holes were kind of blocked with roots and it didn't drain very well I noticed. I've got the tree all planted so now it's time to give it a watering. Okay here I go. And that should be good. I'll place the tree inside the greenhouse yeah, for a few days till it starts warming up, then I'll put it back outside. Let's go in and have a final look at it. This tree had a bit of inverse taper when I first dug it up because it had a really poor root system. But now as I'm developing this radial root system, you can see the flare beginning at the base of the trunk. And it doesn't really have reverse taper anymore. It, uh, it actually is starting to taper nicely from the base to the top. It's still not there yet, but it's getting very close to being the opposite, having nice taper. I think the next few years you'll see that develop further as these radial roots thicken up. You'll see even more, you know, the taper you want, starting thick at the base and tapering up the trunk. I've got the tree in the greenhouse and I still have two more American elms to do, the smaller ones. There's a, this is the large, there's a medium and a smaller one. And I'm sure someday I'll grow them together as a clump, uh, three trees, sort of a small forest in a more of a landscape style pot. But for now, I'm just training them, getting the roots system developed and nice and radial and developing, you know, the upper structure of the trees. So that'll be coming up. I will, uh, I'll, I will show you the repotting of the other two elms. Maybe not as detailed, but I'll, I'll show you what the root bases look like. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for watching in the Bonsai Zone.